Coming on to the question itself, you don't have to worry about what is the diagnosis. They have provided it, right? So if we see the last line, if we see the last line that uh, following management approaches as most appropriate for sarcoidosis. So they have given that in the very last line. So you don't need to worry. You need to start with the very first line, high level lymphadenopathy and thinking about the differential diagnosis. That this is one way which you can go ahead and approach the questions or the MCQs, right? Always start from the last, which is being asked in the, in the particular question. And then go ahead, just have an eye over the five options, right? Further, if you think that, yes, this can be the probable uh, answer or this can be the correct option, then you go ahead with the above stem, right? Or it's so that you are not missing something or there are some other important point or the clue which is being mentioned or something like that. There is allergy to some drug, right? And you might be going ahead with any uh, the answer to that particular drug. Right. So this is, first of all, the approach. Now, if we talk about sarcoidosis, you all know these patients have BHL, that is bilateral lymph, hyalur lymphadenopathy. Very, very important. Right. And they present, they start with the cough. And when you go with a radiograph, which is x-ray, initially you will see hyalur lymphadenopathy. And this is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. This is the hyalur area, which is showing the lymphadenopathy. Right, and this is bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy, which is being referred as stage one. Right, so if we talk about the stages, now I'll come to the stages based on X ray. First of all, stage one is BHL, stage two is BHL plus interstitial infiltrates, stage three is only diffuse interstitial infiltrates, right, without BHL, and stage four is diffuse fibrosis. Now, if we come on to the radiographs. Now, first of all, stage one says this is BHL, bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. Second, you will be able to see all the infiltrates as well, right? They are infiltrates also, along with the lymphadenopathy. Third, there is not much significant lymphadenopathy in the stage three, right? You just see bilateral infiltrates throughout, all over the lung field. And stage four is the last one, which is the stage of fibrosis, right? So this is how it is being staged according to the radiograph, right? So one thing which you need to know for your exam point of view for MRCP exam is this stages, depending on the radiograph or the chest X-ray. Secondly, the other points which you need to know are these one, and these are all in, all, all in the books. First of all, this is a non-cageating granuloma. Very, very, very important, right? And these patients have, they, they present with the other important is hypercalcemia, very, very, very important, right? And many times you just get the investigations. You get the investigation, you need to see all the investigation. If you find calcium on a higher side, this can be one of the differential, the most important differential which you can go ahead with. Right. Although there are many causes of it, but most important for the exam point of view, if the patient presenting with the respiratory uh, discomfort or respiratory symptoms along with hypercalcemia, yes, that is one thing. Second, yes, you can think about the cancers as well. Now, can I have the answer? Which cancer of the lung can cause hypercalcemia? Which cancer of the lung can cause hypercalcemia? Answers from your side. Is it the small cell? Is it the upper cell? Yeah. It's squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, 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 great. So this squamous cell carcinoma, as rightly mentioned, uh, all these cancers, what they do is they produce PTH-related peptide, which causes hypercalcemia. Right. Whereas the hypercalcemia in sarcoidosis, which we are talking about, it is due to granulomas causing increased conversion of vitamin D to its active form, which is 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol. Right. So, so the cause for hypercalcemia is different in sarcoid rather than if we talk about the squamous cell carcinoma, the other differential with the respiratory discomfort or respiratory problems, right, or respiratory involvement. Okay. Now, the other things which you need to know about sarcoid are the three syndromes. One is Lofgren. 
second is heel fort and third is mucolytic syndrome so lofgren's have bhl as the one nodosum very very important from exam point of view in 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 a, in a uh, question of sarcoidosis that yes it is usually present and can anyone describe how erythema nodosum presents is it tender is it non tender where is the typical site of erythema nodosum and is it a good prognosis or a bad bad one it has got good prognosis okay great great doctor sachin it has good prognosis it where is painful it uh, is tender painful. very good very good painful tender, tender on shin on lips. on shin exactly and having a good prognosis very important so these are the three questions which they commonly ask about erythema nodosum associated with sarcoidosis secondly there can be fever and polyarthralgia so these are the features which are present in lofgren first of all and this is not lofler's so please remember this is lofgren syndrome second heel fort syndrome so it is also called as uv barotid uh, fever in which you have barotid enlargement fever and uveitis and third if we talk about is mucolytic syndrome it is an enlargement of the barotid and lacrimal glands due to sarcoidosis tuberculosis or lymphoma right so you need to remember as one two and three associated with sarcoidosis now uh, if you have reached to a point that you have made a differential diagnosis of sarcoidosis now how to go ahead right you have done the x ray you have done the, the uh, you have the complaint the respiratory complaint patient presents with cough right and you have the the tender uh, nodules on the shin of the patient right now what is the next modality you will go ahead or which will help you in making the diagnosis answers from your side ace levels okay okay ace you are level. talking about the treatment or the uh, di uh, diagnosis no so the, how you approach what is the next best to approach the scenario next A majority of the patients will not require any treatment they will get without okay without treatment okay and uh, Uh, and some of the patients will require steroids like those who present with hypercalcemia or uh, if the lung function is deteriorating and eye is involved heart is involved or uh, neuro is involved okay so if they talk about the management next best approach right so next best approach obviously you will first make a diagnosis you will not jump on to the treatment right so in the diagnosis if you talk about what is the next initial investigation if the question says initial investigation then yes you can go ahead with as level but if they ask about what is the best next best investigation then yes the answer would be ct chest ct chest exactly CT chest. which is help in making that diagnosis but third point if they talk about which is the gold standard for making the diagnosis not next best what is the gold standard then trans the bronchial biopsy exactly then the answer would be trans bronchial lung biopsy right so please remember these are the three different forms of the question you, which you might see in your question banks all also in the previous year papers and they keep on asking like that they just play with the with few words in the end in, in the last right you are very happy reading starting with the very first line that yes you have got to the diagnosis this is sarco this is now in the last in the last line what they play is they will play with these terms which is the next initial which is the next best which is the gold standard so i hope now all these we are clear to you to yeah. all of you who are attending this yes Yes, sir. Okay. okay, great. So, so these are the three. And please don't go ahead with lung biopsy, open lung biopsy. It is transbronchial biopsy, right? So it and also it is CT guided. So exact answer would be CT guided uh, transbronchial lung biopsy. Okay. Now, uh, so gold standard would be bronchoscopy with tissue biopsy. This is also you can go ahead. Uh, so important one is you have to go with biopsy, which is the gold standard. indication of steroid so this is being asked in this particular question so uh, if none of this is present then obviously you don't have to start right the treatment remains supportive and this is what is being asked in this particular question and the hence the last fifth option was the correct one 
right? Now, if patient would have stage two or three disease on X-ray, who are symptomatic, asymptomatic and stable stage two or three with mildly abnormal lung function who do not need treatment, hypercalcemia, very, very, very important. And recently they have asked in, in the this one, in the April exam, the August exam, the prior exam, they keep on asking. They keep on asking about this. Now, how much is the level which you think will be the indication to add steroid to the management? Answers. You all have seen this, right? Hypercalcemia, you all might have seen these questions. 11, Dr. Krupanjali. Okay, 11 is in which unit? Is it the milliculens per liter? Is it milligram per deciliter? Is it millimoles per liter? Because units are important. Or is it 11 kgs or 11 meters or 11 centimeters? What's the unit? And you need to know the units, important one. And uh, and and uh, in MRCP, if we talk about the UK examination, they don't use milligram per deciliter much, right? So the unit which they use is millimoles per liter. So, and what you mentioned is milligram per deciliter, 11. So it is three millimoles per liter, right? If it is more than that, then yes, that is an indication. That is an indication. Okay, 1.23. So what you just mentioned, Dr. Amreen, 1.23, 1, 1 that is your ionized calcium. Right? So there are many different. So if you talk about the total calcium and that too in millimoles per liter, it is three, which you just mentioned is the ionized calcium. Okay. Yeah. Involvement of the eyes, heart, and CNS, again, the important. So these two are very important from exam point of view. Right. So these are the few questions which uh, which I thought are important for your exam point of view. And in fact, these are the questions which have been made. And this is the exact question, similar question, not exact. I'll not use the word exact. Right. Copyright. Because exam a uh, similar question came in this recent examination of part one. And uh, all the students of my group, I'm so thankful to, to them, uh, Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Uh, Guraya, Dr. Rohit. So they have actually uh, recalled all these questions, right? Dr. Ann as well. So they have recalled all these questions and have framed these, right? And this is the explanation also added to it. 